everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus. I'm Trace. This is a show where we take one big topic and we break it into a series of five episodes so that we all understand it a little bit better. And this week we are talking about dreams. What are they? Where do they come from? What's a nightmare? How does lucid dreaming work? And have people learned things from their dreams? But before we do that, we need to know what is a dream and why do we do it? So what do we know about dreams? We know that when you're awake, your conscious brain is in control. It's almost like you have two brains because as you fall asleep, your processes, your conscious processes are handed off to your unconscious processes. And that's why you twitch as you're falling asleep because that's during the handoff. It's, It's kind of strange. And the sleeping brain is way more mysterious because we can't exactly ask it what's happening. We can't study it as easily as the conscious brain. The only way we can really experience people's dreams is through dream journals, which is when you wake up and write down your dream. Scientists don't even really know, I mean, why we sleep. Like, why? Or why we have rapid eye movement when we sleep. Or why we dream when we're asleep. It's really mysterious time of our lives, and it's weird because we do a lot of it, like a third of our life. But they do know that almost all dreams occur during REM sleep, or rapid eye movement sleep. Sigmund Freud believed that dreaming was like a safety valve. It was a way for unconscious desires to kind of escape into our conscious mind. In 1953, researchers first described REM in sleeping infants. Although infants don't dream about themselves, they do have dreams. And then they began studying sleeping and dreaming. Most mammals and birds also show signs of REM sleep, and reptiles and other cold-blooded animals don't. So you've probably seen video of dogs dreaming. We don't know that they're dreaming. Well, we're pretty confident that they are. We can't be absolutely sure because you can't ask ask them, but it does seem like they are based on that. So what is REM sleep? That's if that's when we dream, what's going on there? REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep you see in movies a lot. It's when your eyes are closed and they're moving around a lot. And there are signals traveling through the thalamus part of your brain, which relay to the cerebral cortex, which is the outer layer of your brain. And that's responsible for learning, thinking, and organizing information. And it works with another area called the pons. The pons send signals that shut off neurons in the spinal cord, causing temporary paralysis of your limb muscles. If something interferes with that paralysis, then people are going to kind of act out their dreams. If you are familiar with Mike Birbiglia, that is a disorder that he has, and it can be pretty dangerous. REM sleep stimulates the areas of your brain used in learning, which can be important during infancy and youth, which is why you dream a lot when you're a kid. And you probably remember many of your dreams from when you were a kid, because it's a way that we can practice real life, but without the consequences of it. They did a study where they took people and they deprived them of REM sleep. They taught a skill to those people, and people who were deprived of REM sleep didn't learn the skill very well. They had another group of people, they taught the same skill, they got REM sleep, and they picked up the skill much easier. Some scientists believe that dreams are the cortex's attempt to find meaning in random signals that happen during REM sleep when the brain is shooting information back and forth across your brain. Perhaps this is the kind of conscious mind or a shadow of it while you're asleep trying to figure out what it is that's happening in there. These random signals do have a story to them, and we can use these stories to our benefit. Everybody dreams. Everybody. People who say they don't dream, and this is according to the research that I've read, either don't remember them or are lying, which is kind of crazy. Waking from REM sleep is the way to remember your dreams best. So if you want to remember your dreams, then have somebody wake you up while you're in REM sleep. And dream recall isn't easy. You forget 90% of the dreams that you have. But it's normal to do that. That's not unusual. Most people forget their dreams. And even blind people dream, by the way. Blind people who were born blind don't have things that they see in their dreams. They experience vivid sounds and feelings. But people who became blind after birth, they still see in their dreams, which is pretty cool. But again, they don't necessarily remember them. They just know that they have them. The reason that we don't remember them is actually really tough to answer. It turns out that when you're asleep, because of the way your brain waves change, uh, we recall some things, we don't recall other things. People who recall their dreams had, according to live science, a sustained decrease in an alpha brainwave. 
The decrease in the alpha wave shows that the brain is inhibited from responding to stimuli, like name calling. So if you were asleep and you were in alpha wave sleep and I said your name, you probably wouldn't wake up. They think that alpha waves are something that's telling your brain stay asleep. It's important right now, just stay asleep, rather than responding to outside stimuli. But people who remember their dreams, they wake up more often at night, so they don't have as big an alpha wave dip as people who don't remember their dreams. Perhaps it is that people who recall their dreams more often or have more active brains, but it's not really the whole answer. We, we don't know exactly why you forget so many dreams and why some people are so good at remembering them. I forget most of my dreams. I would say I remember a dream every few weeks, whereas other people that I know remember every dream they've had. They remember who was there, they remember where they were every single day, and that sounds exhausting. <laughs> The faces in your dreams, in case you're wondering, when it comes to who was there, are people you're, the people you actually know in real life. Maybe it was a guy who you know, served you dinner the other day, or somebody you met when you were a kid at a grocery store who you never saw again. Your brain sucks in that information and saves it. So we have this kind of cast of characters that's everyone you've ever met, and the brain can't make up faces, so it uses those faces. In the end, why we dream is an unanswered question, but there are hypotheses. An article on Scientific American by Ernest Hartman, who is the professor of psychiatry at Tufts University, says that we don't know why we do it, but that it appears people dream to be guided by their emotions and then process those emotions. He says, quote, weaving new material into the memory system in a way that both reduces emotional arousal and is adaptive in helping us cope with further trauma or stressful events. It's interesting that he uses the word trauma because that reminds me of negative things, which reminds me of nightmares. And that's tomorrow's episode on Test Tube Plus. Why don't you tell me the last dream that you remember down in the comments? And I'll get down there if I have one that I can remember. It's sometimes tough. But tomorrow, come back, find out more about nightmares. So make sure you subscribe to Test Tube Plus for that. And if you did not watch last week's series all about psychedelic drugs, that's almost like dreaming. So you might want to go watch those as well. Thanks for watching Test Tube Plus. I'm Trace. We will see you tomorrow.